Hello, hello, welcome back to Dead of the Brain. We just had a long conversation there with the doc and my girlfriend um, about where to go next and what to do about the outbreak. Can't go anywhere, I guess, except for this creepy uh, hotel which is under construction. So I want to welcome everybody back. Hope you enjoyed the first episode. We'll have to see if our heroes can stop this zombie apocalypse. So uh, there was a note, you know, in the police station about uh, coming to this hotel. So that's why we're here, and I'm just looking at it. Can't talk to it. Can we go inside? And the door is locked. And has a special code on it, of course. I guess that's what that number was that we found on the piece of paper, I'm assuming. Let's see, what was it? Move? You know, I'd assume that the use command would be more appropriate than move. So the, the piece of paper was 216. I checked my previous episode just to be sure. 216. And now we are... I don't know if those are floors on the screen or what? What are these red areas? This is kind of a high-tech looking hotel. So we got an elevator over here. So the blinking red lights, is that the second and third floor or something? So the first, I don't know. I don't really know what that little indicator means. They're describing this place like it's built like a fortress. So that probably means this is where the, uh, whoops, didn't mean to load, save just in case. This is probably where the survivors I'm assuming have come. Okay, there we go. I looked enough at the screen and it says f something about floor two and three. So let's open the door to two. Lovely. I don't think we'll be going in floor number two. Yes, close the door. Thank you. So why is there like already zombies in this place? If it was under construction. Oh. He's trying to get through. The usual scene of we gotta hold the door shut. Okay, that was a little dangerous. Let's, uh... 
Let's go up to the next floor and be careful. So it looks like no zombies here for the moment. Hmm. <laughs> he described it like the White House, or it's like for White House officials, or... I don't know, maybe this is a hotel for elite people to stay at, so it's got safety measures? Apparently it's really strong glass, and of course can't get any of these without the codes. Just go through all the options as usual. I guess we'll just have to keep looking at stuff. Have to get another code maybe for that. Just checking on all the doors just to be sure. And yeah, they're just describing them as all the same. Just so exciting. You know, most of the dialogue is, you know, they're just describing. Oh, Ugokuna, somebody told me not to move. Oh, hello there. That's right, we're survivors. Leftover. This is like the chief of police or something. Keel. And he left the note back in the... Uh, um, police station. See, when you do look, it just sort of describes, you know what's in the scene and kind of gives you a hint. And it looks like there's a police officer, a couple girls on the left, three guys on the right, one with his feet on the table, so he looks like a slacker. So now we're going to meet the uh, survivors, probably. I mean the uh, victims of this game because, yeah, you'll have to like, you have to meet some people, you know, get to know them, and then kill them off. Because that's how it works. One by one. And yeah, I know the dialogue isn't all that exciting. And um, yeah, I'll try to breeze through stuff when uh, when it becomes long-winded. Right now, just describing uh, you know the people in the room. Each of them is kind of introducing themselves: Sally, Ray, skinhead no otoko. Is noze. So are we going to stand with these guys and fight the zombie? I said no, screw that. But instead they're going to talk me into it anyway, so it doesn't matter what choice you make there. They're still going to give you a gun, ID card, and grenade to start our fight against the zombies. So I don't have much of a choice. The illusion of choice. These games have lots of choices, but nothing to actually choose from. <laughs> Why would I use my gun? So I'm going to use the... Oh, hello. So this guy wanted to come and introduce himself. 
Hypnose. And yeah, after a very long dialogue there, um, we are finally in our room with our lovely girlfriend, Shira, and the professor who has a sword. And they want us to help uh, go down and clear out the second floor of the um, of this hotel, apparently. There was some long dialogue that I skipped, but um, apparently uh, Ray, the uh, slacker punker style guy, his girlfriend is on the second floor. And she's been bitten, and uh, she has a pendant. So we're looking for a zombie with a pendant, pretty much. Because, of course, it's got to be personalized, right? So, Cole, be careful. And then she said there's a department store across the street where we can get some food that doesn't have too many zombies. So for some reason the professor is going with us, I don't know why, because he thinks he's cool and he's got a sword and here we have another hallway, just like before. And a bunch of rooms. So let's just go ahead and go inside one. We'll always start on the left. Well, that's lovely. I would be excited except for the missing arm lying there on the ground. So there's our first bit of nudity in this game. Anything in the locker? Nope. So yeah, she's not a zombie, but you know, who would tie her up there and you know, take the arm off? I thought the zombies like to eat brains. Can't talk. See, like, they'd let me talk to the corpses in the, in the police station in the last episode, so why can't I talk to that lovely lady? She seemed to be particularly chatty. And, whoa, and sexy. And we got a couple live ones here. Oh, hey, I get to shoot him. Nice. Didn't get a timer on that one. So they must have been pretty occupied with that tasty morsel on the ground. Rather than me. Wait, this room looks just like that other room. Except the other room had a had a cute girl in it, and this one just has three guys that I shot. And Gomi. It's like all these boxes are just like nothing, but I have to look at them anyway. Can't interact with anything. Roka ni deru. back to the hallway, so I'm just going to check all these rooms real quick. I guess our goal is looking for Ray's girlfriend. I don't know, the zombie with the pendant. Nobody here. A 
Lots of boxes. And that's all. They're empty too. And they could have like added some items, like I could make a, make a weapon or something. Well, maybe I can do that later in the game, but at the moment it's just all empty stuff. Check all the options again. Okay, nothing going on in this room. Let's uh, go across the hall. Oh, lovely. Are those tasty brains? So uh, I, I died there a couple times actually. I didn't realize that I had had a target and I suddenly had to shoot her in the head. So there of course is the girlfriend with the pendant, I'm guessing. Actually the, the first time I, I shot the guy that she was munching on and then she attacked me and I got game over and that happened a couple times. And then I got her. They really don't give you much time to react. She looks like she's 20 years old and probably was beautiful. Well, I'm just, yeah, it says Ray, Ray's girlfriend had a pendant. I wonder if that's the pendant. They just keep saying she looks young. It's like, come on. Oh, there we go. So after looking at the pendant about four times, discussing it, they actually open it up, and there's a picture of uh, Ray, I assume. The guy that had his feet on the desk in the uh, survivor's room. Okay, so I guess let's uh, check this final room here on the right. Doesn't let me go down the hall, unfortunately. It's kind of black back there. Whoops. I guess we've already been in here. Any new zombies? Nothing new. Sometimes things change, you know, in these games. So sometimes you have to revisit you know, some of the rooms several times. Yeah, this is the one with the girl. Gotta look at her some more. Just wanted to be sure nothing changed. Okay, let's go in this door we haven't gone in yet. And just another empty room. <laughs> Downboard, that's a cardboard box? It looks like a locker to me, but apparently that's a big cardboard box. Looks like there's something over here. Oh yeah? What's this? We got a tool kit. 
Huh, he's gonna guard the door like a samurai. So, uh, yeah, we're just looking through here. We got some tools. Oh! And now we got a zombie attacking Doc. Oh, what? Really? That didn't give me enough time to shoot him at all. So the zombie ran away and Doc uh, got pretty much injured here so he's doing his spiel about he's gonna turn into a- oh! He's gonna turn into a zombie and wanted me to shoot him and I didn't have a choice. Cole just sort of automatically shot him in the head. Saying, you are one of my best friends. All these years, such a kind man. I'll never forget you. Why'd you shoot him in the head? You know, we could have looked for a cure or something. They didn't even give me a choice. So now we're gonna go after the zombie that just munched on Doc. Well, let me go to those rooms. He must be in this room. Oh, goodness. He was waiting for me. Apparently he's really strong. What should I do? Can't poke him in the eyes this time, apparently. Shall we talk to him? Let's talk to him. Yeah, I like this one. We'll talk to him. That doesn't seem to do much, either. He uh, doesn't communicate. Run away. Or fight. I chose to stay there and fight. I don't think it matters here. It's gonna go for my brains. So he's talking about this is the same zombie. Uh oh, he's starting to lose consciousness, being strangled. This is the same zombie that was attacking Doc. Somebody entered the room. They didn't have any good sound effects there. I had to add some. Oh hey, there's Doc's sword. Finally should have used it. I wonder why that side of the screen was black. They were hiding another character who just saved us apparently so who is this let's have a little chat here This guy's a journalist. There's always a journalist named Kane after the scoop. Wait, what? You haven't seen the news or heard the radio for a while? It's like one month he's been fighting these things. Cole says that's impossible. He doesn't really watch the news, but. So, yeah, apparently the outbreak has been going on for a month already in another town. I don't see how you wouldn't notice that. Um, but anyway, the uh, Kane is his name. The, uh, the reporter there, he said that 
he's been on the lookout for, you know, what caused this and, you know, how it got started and everything. But one month ago, apparently in his town, it started already. You'd think that we heard about it, unless there's some kind of secret government cover-up here going on. So apparently one month ago things started, so it hasn't been a recent thing. So the recent stuff has just been happening to us, unless Kane is lying. And, uh, yeah, Sheila's kind of sad about the professor, I guess, uh, he was a good friend to both of them. That's right, don't blame me, even though I did shoot him in the head. So, Noz came... Hmm? Gave us a key? For Doc's house? How did he get it? So there's a key for Doc's house. So apparently we need to go there to find out the truth about what's going on. After talking to Kane, you know, something's up. So he's mentioning to Sheila that, you know, one month ago, uh, the breakout started according to Kane, but Sheila's surprised that there was nothing on the news or anything either. So something's going on, some kind of cover-up. And we're gonna take a rest from all this action. Talking about what's been going on. I don't know, Cole looks a little weird there. He looks like he was zoning a bit. Not sure what happened last night, but we're awake and it's raining outside. That's what all those white pixels are on the window. It's rain. So apparently Sheeta's gone across the street. She left a note and uh, she took our gun just in case. She's gonna go buy some food. So I don't have any weapons at the moment. Sheila's got my weapons. Sally, huh? She came to wake me up. Need to go to the meeting room. They're going to talk about what the next job is that I have to do while they all sit in the room doing absolutely nothing. I have to do all the work hunting all the zombies. Okay, so I guess we're gonna go to the meeting room here. No reason to go back to my own room. There was that other girl that was on the, the left side is missing. The one by Sally. Yeah, I expected that. It's like, where do you think you're looking? Nowhere in particular. Just want to see if you have any injuries from the zombies. Making sure you're okay. Okay, so... In this scene, it looks like I'm just talking to all of the characters, so there's going to be a lot of dialogue here. 
They're each uh, just talking about their uh, situation, how they got here. what their jobs were, their hobbies, what they like to do on the weekend, how many cats they have, this military guy seems nice, so here's Ray, the uh, punker style guy, it's kind of cool the background changes when you talk to each of these guys. Um, you know, you can see the chair is empty. But yeah, I don't think I want to tell Ray that I shot his girlfriend with the pendant. So I can go to Kathy's room, and she's the other girl that wasn't there apparently. Cole, can I come in? Wow, complete strangers and I can come in. So we kind of each got our own rooms at the hotel here. Kathy's got a small body but a nice chest. I didn't say it, that's what Cole said. And yeah, for some reason after quite a bit of talk, she's got a coin in her bra, her lucky coin. Looks like a penny that she keeps with her. And she's giving the speech, uh, this is, you know, the end of the world, it could be our last day. You're pretty handsome. Why, thank you. We've just met. This is crazy. But undress for me, maybe. So, should I hug her close? Or not? Can't talk to her. I have to choose at the bottom here. Yeah, I guess let's be a nice guy and hug her. Um, make sure she's okay. Gotta be supportive, right? I wonder if it would really make her happy if I do that? Well, she asked me to, so... Cassie. Well, that escalated pretty quick. Korosan, ah, Korosan no te, totemo atakai, so warm, ha ha. Okay, I'm not gonna do the uh, erotic sound effects, sorry. But that's pretty much what's going on here. So hopefully this doesn't mean that uh, she's going to be the next to die because Okay, we're escalating here quite a bit. Wow, Kolsan, what an amazing guy. It's like, we well, better tell her about the girlfriend, right? Guess I'll stop here at this happy scene, because everybody knows if I do, they'll tune in for the next exciting episode. See you in the next one.